What's up people and welcome to the first video in a 62 and a half part video series on how to make your vlogs look more cinematic. I get messages from people and a lot of times the messages consist of how do you get your footage to look like that? How do you how do you get it to, to look so good? How do you get it to look so cinematic? And I want to talk about a couple of, this actually is going to be like part one of a couple of videos, but I want to talk about camera movement. I want to talk about how to, how to use a camera in such a way that it creates a more cinematic look or a smoother look or whatever you want to call it. And I'm, I'm mainly talking to people who vlog. So like that's my primary background as far as filmmaking goes. I'm, I'm I'm a vlogger more than I am a filmmaker. I've made one film. By the way, that film is in the description. You should check it out. It's a documentary. It's a 32 minute documentary. I'm pretty freaking proud of it. And so in this video, I wanna talk about how to make your footage, your B-roll footage in your vlog look more better, more better, more gooder. Footage looks really good right now. I wanna, I wanna talk about the base camera movements that I use to make my B-roll and my vlog and my cinematic sequences look better. Uh, as, a, as a qualifier, I'm gonna talk about a couple of things. Number one, all of the footage you're about to see was shot at 60 frames per second, which is super helpful when it comes to slowing things down and making them look smoother. Number two, can't remember what number two is. All this footage was shot completely handheld, with the exception of having a gorilla pod on my camera for a little bit of additional stability. There was no gliders, no Zion cranes, no glide cams, no steady cams, no nothing to make this footage look any more cinematic or smoother. It's all handheld. Number three, the wider lens you use, the more leniency you have when it comes to making footage look smoother. This b-roll you're about to see was shot on a 10 to 18 Canon lens with image stabilization. If you can get a wider lens with image stabilization it's gonna help you with with smoother shots. The more telephoto the lens the harder it is to stabilize especially if you're moving back and forth. Okay so let's talk about the movements and we're gonna be dissecting this b-roll sequence. Roll the sequence. So that was my friend Brittany. Uh, she is the, the the queen bee of the Iron King, which is the gym that employs me to do their video work. Also where I work out and do powerlifting. Also generally awesome place and you should check that out. Within that sequence you saw all of the base level movements, with the exception of maybe one, that I use when capturing b-roll sequences. And there's two things that I want you to pay attention to. Number one is the movement itself. Number two is the emotion it creates, which is something that people just tend not to look at. So let's talk about those movements. The first movement is the push in or pull out. <laughs> and that is when the camera slowly pushes into the subject or moves away from the subject. Now, the emotion that this creates, and I tend to be very careful with how I use this, this movement because it can be used in a very powerful way. If you use these movements absent to the emotional premise behind them, they're still gonna look good. It just adds itself to it. If I wanna create more intimacy or more closeness, then I'm pushing into the subject. If I wanna create a feeling of absence or pressure or stress or distance, I pull away from the subject. Oftentimes when I'm ending a sequence, you'll see me pulling away from whatever it was I'm shooting, whereas if I'm starting it or if I'm establishing it, I'm pushing in. That's kind of the emotion behind it, and it's a really simple thing. The camera is moving on an axis towards the subject or moving on an axis away from the subject. This is a movement that can be, it's very similar to a slider, and I like it. This is one of my favorite movements. Quick tip to make that movement more efficient or better looking is to make sure you have something to glide up against. It's gonna be a lot more obvious if you're gliding in when you see my hand right here. Like if you're moving slowly towards me or slowly away from me, my hand is a good starting point to kind of see where that motion's coming from. If, there's, if, it, if you're really far away and there's nothing you're gliding up against, it kind of looks absent, right? And again, the wider the lens, the better. This A lot of the glide shots were shot at a 10 millimeter focal distance, 
and this is a crop sensor camera, so that's equivalent to a 16 millimeter focal distance on a full frame camera. Movement number two is a is a horizontal slide. So the camera is facing this way, but instead of moving in and out, it's moving to the side. Again, super helpful when creating uh, this effect to have something to glide against so, as a point of reference. And as far as the, um, the emotional feeling, it can, it can really create a sense of pressure or a release of pressure when you're observing it, right? For example, if we're abiding by the rule of thirds, so if we were to look at my frame right now, I'm sitting a little bit on the third line, my car seat over here is on the other third line, and if I'm moving to expose, if I'm moving to reveal more of what's on the open side of the frame, it creates a little bit of a release in pressure versus if I'm moving in a way that closes the frame, so if the camera were to glide this way, it creates a little bit more pressure. I love this motion because a lot of my transitions are done with speed ramps and this motion really makes the speed ramp look good. So I'll start way out of frame, come into frame, and then move away from frame. Now there is a difference between a, a pan where I might stay in one spot, but the camera is moving like this, and a slide where the camera is constantly moving, but but fixated on the same axis this way, versus a pan looking like this. I think the slide looks better, it's just a little harder to get handheld. Um, and the pan looks a little bit more um, feature-esque, like I am attempting to showcase a space rather than showcase a subject. Movement number three is a combination. It's a little bit, it's, it's known as the parallax effect, where you're combining a slide and a pan at the same time, so you're keeping something in, in focus, but moving at the same time to create a little bit of a, of, of a, almost a grinding effect between something that's in the foreground and something that's in the background. This is by far one of the easier things to do handheld, especially if you're shooting on a longer lens. And I love the effect that it provides because it keeps the subject centered and at the same time creates this motion around the subject, which really makes them look awesome. If it's shot more up, uh, and the angle so like if you're looking more up at the subject it creates more of a hero shot and if it's looking more down It can create a sense of inferiority or even submissiveness if you're shooting it properly the last two movements are uh, Can be used alone or combined and that is the vertical pan uh, push in in a pan or a push in and a pan down, right? And a lot of times I'll use this as a way of establishing a character or establishing a location, right? So if I start pushing in and panning up, I can look up to that hero shot that I want when I'm looking at my subject. Uh, or I can start if I'm in the trees or something with a pan down revealing who I'm doing the, the film about or the subject within the film. A horizontal or a vertical pan can be used alone. Honestly, it's the one that I use the least though. In conjunction with a lot of the other things that I'll be talking about in the not too distant future, this is what makes these videos or these sequences look good is the mastery of these movements. These are the motions that you need to get good at, so fo focus on on practicing these movements. The push-ins and push-out, the pull-outs, the horizontal and vertical pans, the slides. The other one, the only other one I didn't really mention is like a crane effect where it's similar to the slide where it's on the same axis but the focal point's not fixed whereas I, I could do this way and it creates a parallax. If I do it this way it creates a, like a craning up and a craning down effect. I really don't use that a whole lot either. I don't know why. Maybe I should try and incorporate a little bit more. The parallax effect and then the tilt ups and tilt downs are the basis of cinematic filmmaking, the cinematic shots that are in motion, right? Of course you can have locked off shots like this, but when you're creating a, a story, a visual, you're telling a visual story around a subject, I love motion for that. Hope you guys got some value out of this video. Hope you dug it. If you did, liking this and subscribing to the channel will help me out big time. Uh, sharing this video for, with somebody that wants to get better creating stories or creating visual stories or being a better cinematographer would really help me out. It's like hours away from me having three days off from work and two days off from the gym and I'm really ready to relax. Okay, bye.